Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. and this is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things clinical psychology. If you are interested in clinical psychology, if you're applying to clinical psychology school, or if you're already in clinical psychology, this channel is for you. Today we're going to be talking about all things in the application process. We're going to be talking about the GRE, your GPA, your the whole application process with getting letters of rec, and your personal statement, and your CV. Like We're going to be talking about all of those things in this video, so stay tuned. I'm going to give you my best tips and advice as you go through your application process for clinical psychology. So the question that I've been getting a lot, and it makes sense because it's basically application season right now, is what is the most important important thing in the whole application process and obviously you guys probably already know that it also it really depends on the school that you apply to but I will say that more and more schools are turning away from just having a really high GRE score having a really high G GPA and are looking holistically at the individual at the applicant to see where their strengths and weaknesses are and if they are a well-rounded student most schools are going to want well-rounded candidates and so this benefits a lot of people if they have different weaknesses in their application because you can try and make up for it in other ways in the application in this video i'm going to tell you guys what i think are the three most important things in your application process and how that's going to lead to your interview and what you're going to do in your interview process to really clinch that spot. The first thing that we'll start talking about today is the GPA, right? So most schools, actually most all schools, are going to require you to at least have a bachelor's degree. And so most schools are going to have a cutoff of at least having either a 3.0 or above. You know, most schools, most graduate schools are gonna have that cutoff. And so I get a lot of questions of, you know, is it really important to have that 3.5, 3.6, 3.7 GPA? And obviously you just gotta do the best that you can do, right? Of course you want a really high GPA. And if you don't have a high GPA, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're meeting their cutoffs, you should be okay. And if you guys are really worried about your GPA, Honestly, this is what I did and I know this is what other students did too before getting into the program. But you can call these schools. You know, when you apply to these schools, you're going to put in, you're going to pay an application fee, right? Like $50, $75, sometimes $100. And you should know what you're putting your money into. In other words, you should call these schools and say, hey, and ask them, yeah, what, what is important to you guys? Is it really important to have a high GPA? Is it really important to have a high GRE score? Or are you guys looking holistically at the candidate? And there's obviously going to be some schools that have way more emphasis emphasis on the GRE and the GPA. And those are the schools that you have to be aware of, right? If you're going for those higher end schools, then and you have a high GPA and a high GRE score, then of course you can go for that. But if you don't, you want to find the schools that are holistically looking at the candidate from top to bottom. And and so it doesn't hurt for you to email these schools and ask them what they what they are looking for in a candidate. If they are looking for someone with a high GPA, because right off the bat, if you have a low GPA and they're looking for a high GPA, you can say, well, maybe I won't put my money, my application money into that school and I'll just look for a different school. The next thing is the GRE, and maybe I'll do a, a separate video for my whole GRE experience. I actually had a terrible GRE experience, but the GRE is definitely something that most students do not look forward to. Again, I don't see the GRE as being super important, but other schools might, right? And again, when you find those schools that are holistically looking at the candidate, honestly guys, as long as you don't butcher your GPA and you don't butcher your GRE and you have other things in your application to supplement for those weaker areas, you should be okay. I mean, that's what holistic means, right? Holistic means is that you're going to have some natural weaknesses in your application, but you're also going to have some incredible strengths as well. And really, that's what they want. They want a well-rounded candidate. And so my GPA wasn't the best and my GRE score wasn't the best, but it wasn't terrible either. You know, it was basically, you know, meeting the cutoffs just around average. And I had other things in my application process that made up for those things. 
Now I'm gonna go into the three things that I feel like are really, really important, especially for schools that are holistically looking at different candidates. And the first one is going to be the personal statement. Now guys, if you're applying to a clinical psychology program, you should already know that clinical psychology entails a lot of writing. I mean, the career itself is a lot of writing. And so the personal statement isn't something that you should blow off. In fact, I spent a lot of time on my personal statement. I revised my personal statement multiple times. I sent my personal statement to other professors to look at and other faculty members that I knew to look at and read over and revise again and again and again. The personal statement, in my opinion, is a chance for these faculty members to see your writing style, to see if you are a good writer, right? Like when you go into these doctoral programs, you're gonna be writing a lot of papers. You're gonna be writing a dissertation. They want to see that you have some, some decent writing skills. And so I think it's gonna be really important for you to spend the time writing, crafting a personal statement, talking about who you are, talking about your strengths, talking about all the things that you would put in a personal statement. The second thing that I think is really important and that is your resume or your CV. Now, a lot of schools are going to ask you about your resume or your CV, and this is where you get to highlight your career or your experience and really sell yourself to these faculty members that you belong, that your experiences align with the school, and that you would make an incredible candidate if they were to choose you. So I really, again, I took a lot of time on my resume and CV because I wanted to make sure that I could highlight all of my strengths, all of my, my educational accomplishments, my career accomplishments. And this is again, where you can stand out from the other applicants. Even if you have a weaker GPA or GRE score, if you have some notable experience, recognizable experience that is related to clinical psychology and you have years of that experience and, and that is something that they really look into. They really, I mean, everybody in my cohort has some incredible experiences. There's some people in my cohort that have already been counselors, there's some people that have been psychometricians, there's some people that have done extensive research, there's some people that have worked with ABA. I mean, there's there's a lot, I mean, the, the one thing that we all have in common in my cohort is that we all have pretty adequate experience. Even the people that come straight out of college have really good experience. And so that's something that you should highlight in your resume, highlight in your CV, and really also talk about that in your personal statement. The third thing, guys, and in my opinion, again, in my opinion, I think this is the most important, is the letter of recommendation. All right. The reason I think the letters of recommendations are so important is that you have someone else talking about you, right? Like in the personal statement, it's all you. You're talking about yourself. In, in your resume, you're crafting your resume. But in a letter of recommendation, you're having someone else talk about you. And here's the thing. These schools read through tons and tons and tons of letters of recommendation, right? They know they're used to finding the ones that stand out the most, right? The ones where the writer took the most time to really craft a letter that was specifically for that person. Whether you know it or not, there are faculty members that have their own templates for letters of recommendation. They basically just change the name every year and they put a signature on it and they send it to, to wherever you want to send it to. And while that's the best time efficient thing, it's not the most personal letter. And so for you to find people in your life, mentors, <clears throat> professors, teachers, whoever that knows you the best, that knows you in a professional light that can write you an outstanding letter of recommendation, I believe is gonna go a really long way. You know, for me, applying to a doctoral program, the three letters of recommendation people that I had were all doctors, not in clinical psychology, but in other fields, uh, dentists, medicine. I mean, I wanted to have people that knew me in a professional light who were also professionals themselves, right? You know, who also knew what it took to go through a doctoral program and to get that achievement and to also see in me that this person is capable of doing this, right? I think that goes a really long way. So when you choose your, the people that you have to write your letters, choose carefully, ask them, don't just ask them, hey, can you write me a letter of recommendation? Ask them, can you write me a strong letter of recommendation? Add the strong in there right? Because you want to make sure that this person understands, hey, like I need a really good letter. <laughs> 
you know, and that mean that might mean that you might have to plan this out months in advance. You want to give them, you know, three to six months. Give them that time to really craft a really good letter of recommendation, guys. I can't stress this enough, right? Because it's one thing to talk about yourself. It's another thing for if you have three letters of recommendation letters, if they all praise you and applaud you and talk about you in an incredible light, I think that goes a long ways, right? It's not just one person in one out of three that's talking really good about you, but all three of them are talking really good about you and are saying the things that you've been talking about in your personal statement and in your resume. When when they see the faculty members, when they see that consistency all the way through from your personal statement, through your resume, and then through your letters of recommendation, that's that's that means that they're gonna see a well rounded person who not only is self-aware of their strengths and weaknesses, but also other people see that as well. So guys, that is, that's it that we talked about the GRE, we talked about the GPA, we've talked about letters of recommendation, personal statement, and CV. I've given you my personal opinion of what I think is the most important, but at the end of the day, you have to do your own research. Research out these schools, call the schools, call the schools and ask them what they think is the most important. So with that guys, that ends the video. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Definitely, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.